Hi there, it's Ina here and welcome to my art room. Thank you for subscribing to my channel and please click the bell icon to receive notifications of all my regular uploads. All right, it's time to take another look at this journal. Now, in part one, I showed you how I altered the book. I explained about my signatures and also how I put the fabric cover together and a few other details. And of course, today I want you to take a good look and see the inside. Now, before I get there, I want you to take a closer look at this embellishment. She is a little fairy. She has wings, she has a big teacup, a book, and here on her dress is a quote by C.S. Lewis, and it says, you can never get a cup of tea large enough or a book long enough to suit me. Now, I did not make this. I found this at a second-hand store, and it was a lucky find, and I like to believe that she was meant to live here on my journal cover. Now, it is a printed image encased in some kind of resin, so it's very sturdy. It came with a bow, and it came with these little beads here on the bottom. All right, now the next thing is my closure and I opted for a very simple one, just a hair elastic, just like this, which is attached to the bottom cover here. And then here on the top, I used one of my tiny, oops, Chicago screws, oops again, <laughs> and I believe this is very similar to the type of journal posts you can buy. So I pushed it through a hole and then decorated the side with a little half bead. It's a glass bead, a little similar to this one, and I added it with E6000 and hopefully it will stay put. It seems pretty solid. It looks a little bit like an eye and this was an afterthought because it wasn't attached to the journal when I did part one, but now it is. <laughs> All right. Uh, before I get into the pages, I wanted to say that when I do a big project like this, of course, I am influenced by other creators. I watch a lot of videos on journal making and I like to give credit where credit is due. Just sometimes it's a bit hard to pinpoint because I take ideas, I change it, and sometimes I just don't remember where I first saw it. But there are some elements in here which are definitely influenced by specific videos and so I will put the links to those below in my description box. Okay, now let's get going here. So here's the inside cover and right here on the top are my altered uh, clothes tags. I added a bit of fiber and I took the round one and folded it over to make a little tuck spot here. And it holds two vintage playing cards with a nice music design on the back. It holds a little piece from the original book and it introduces the story about Charlie and the Chocolate Factory. And then I added a little distressed tag 2018 on this side and the word dream on the other side. Now, when I started this book, I had no theme in mind. I didn't work on a particular theme, but rather it just came together. <laughs> but at the end, I realized that a lot of the pages were a bit dreamy and a bit whimsical. So the word dream will appear a couple more times here in the book. Now here on the bottom, this is just an image taken from an old book and I mainly edited it to complement uh, his picture over here on the playing card. Now this old playing card used to say Jack Daniels. I added two new words. This one says imagine and this one says discover. And I used this playing card to create a little pocket. Actually I used two cards. Here on the top one I added just three pieces of fabric. I sewed around the edges. Then I added the fabric underneath the second card and glued that one to my cover. Very simply done, but very effective. And it holds a little playing card booklet. Again, I used vintage uh, playing cards, a little variety of them. And this idea I saw in Laurie Marie's channel and there will be a link to her video below. So they have different uh, fun designs on the back. 
There are some flowers, a little girl with her goats, a fishing village, more flowers and birds, a little boy and his pony, and another boat picture. And I attached them together just with a long piece of fabric and just sewing right here across the ends of the cards. And then I embellished them. And they have everything on it you can imagine. All kinds of different mediums and die cut and um, detailing. It had some fabric and some images, stamping and stenciling, glitter and you name it. And it folds up nicely. There are different ways of doing it. Either way, these end up together, these two end pieces. And it makes it easy to put it in there and take it back out. Now, I did a bit of sewing in this journal and I left all the threads. But again, just like in some of my past journals, if you don't sew or you don't have a machine, you can absolutely glue all the things and it will work just as well. Next, I worked on a tag. It was a tag like this and I covered it with old book pages and I created these two pockets just by layering three pieces and I ripped the edge here. I did some distressing on it and then sewed them all up together on top of the tag, including a little bit of lace down here on the bottom. A little fiber on the top and then I drew and painted this little flower. The inside here is uh, embossing powder, the rest is just my Posca pens. And then I decorated a couple of tiny file folders to go into these pockets. They're very similar. They each have a dragonfly, different colors, and I used some old newspaper prints. Some have pictures, some are just words. And then on the inside, a little bit of tissue paper, a little tuck spot made with an index card, and again an old playing card. And I added another piece from the book. This one is all about the author of the story and that lives in there. And this one, very similar. This paper has the five children on it who were able to visit the factory and another old vintage card. And I did a bit of sewing on here as well. So these live in here. And then I added a tiny little metal charm right here at the edge. I just sewed it on and it's a tiny dragonfly. Now after I glued this tag to one of my slim pages, the ones which were part of my signatures, I just covered the back with a piece of craft paper and continued my painting here. Very simply done. And then towards the end of this book, I found this phrase in a magazine. It says, a small collection of imperfect dreams. And I thought it was just a perfect fit. Next, I worked on a very famous photo I found in an old book. Uh, this one was actually done by Eugene Smith in 1946 and he called it Walk into Paradise Garden and these are actually his kids. Now the photo in the book was rather damaged or let's say the whole page was damaged. So I had to paint over these images with some black acrylic paint. I saved a little bit from the background and embellished it a bit with my white Posca pen and then inserted a piece of jelly print I made long time ago and I was glad it kind of came together this way and I was able to salvage the image as I quite like it. So there's that. So this is my underwater page. I had more jelly prints I wanted to use up and especially the top one here reminded me very much of ocean water. So I decoupaged them for a background. I added some paint, some drawing with my permanent marker. I also decoupaged these images of a napkin and then I painted these tiny little fishes and all the air bubbles just by using my black and white Posca pen. And at the end I added over here Mr. Octopus. Now he came to me in the mail. It was a stamped image on a cardstock 
and I colored him, I cut him out, and I attached him with a string. The string comes from the next page. It has a knot, goes through the body of the octopus with a string lying on the back side, and then going back to the next page. This way, the little fellow has the freedom to explore his underwater world. So there he is. The next page is very colorful. Here you see the two knots from the string my octopus lives on. The rest of the background I made by creating a very simple stencil, just ripping a piece of paper and using the edge and a sponge and a little bit of my ink pad colors to create these cloudy designs. Then the gelatos filled in all the color and I added some collage pieces. I had a garden catalog and it had nice bushes, a garden bench and even a front door with some stairs. So I brought it all together by adding some stamping. I added the bird and the tiny birds up here and of course I couldn't resist. I had to uh, make sure the door would open and if you open it you can see the puppy on the other side. So let's move on to the next page. And of course I can open the door to this side and you can see the background and the little bird right there. I painted the tree and it was a little tricky to make sure that the door would open right in the middle of it, but I managed. The background was done with watercolors. I added these lanterns and then I was looking for something to fit this kind of whimsical idea with the door in a tree and so on. And I had just received a magazine from my local vet and it had these cute puppies in it. So I took these, I gave them each a set of wings and also these really pretty little bow ties. Now these are three-dimensional little things which also came to me in the mail. And I think those puppies are happy in their little world here. Next I have a bit of a combination page, this being the focal point. Now the idea to suspend uh, shapes with strings in a frame came from Lori Marie and there will be a link below to her video. So I made a double frame so I could embed these strings. I also made double image pieces. Again the string goes right through the middle. I also embedded some craft paper here for the windows and the door and up here to give the moon a bit of a shine. The moon also has a little glitter. Now when I was done with putting it all together, I realized the frame was still very flimsy. So I took uh, some of these sticks, wooden sticks. They are from Starbucks. They are their coffee sticks. And I glued them to the edges. I hope you can see it. And that made it really sturdy. I also added pieces from the drywall tape. Bits and pieces of this also went on the house and on the moon, mostly for extra texture and interest. And then I sewed everything in together. So the strings won't go anywhere. They're very securely attached. And so are these pieces. I sewed all around the houses as well and around the moon. And the stitching gives it a bit of extra interest. And then I used my metallic rub just to bring out the texture and I think it came out pretty cool. Now this page in hindsight should have probably been on this side but it works the other way just as well. This is an image taken from a napkin. I had to manipulate it just a bit to make it fit the page. It already had the nice night sky and image. All I added were dots of my glossy accent, a few stars, a little splatter and some glitter. And when I close this page you can see it looks quite nice against the night sky. And here I used a different color metallic rub again just to bring out the texture. Now the page also looks fine against this background. Now this page was created by using a full page from a magazine. It just had some greenery on it, 
a few flowers and this little hair. So I added some masking fluid over him. While I worked on the background it got paint and gesso and sprays and all kinds of things to alter it. I also punched out some circles of different sizes from another magazine image. It had kind of a forest fire on it and I arranged them here on top drew the flowers just with my permanent marker, gave them a little color and that's pretty much it. Of course I took the masking fluid off the hair so he stayed very much intact and he peeks out in between the two houses over there. Here at the end I put a little metal charm, this time a tiny little leaf. And somewhat of an abstract page over here. I started with a piece of napkin. It was printed on with letters and numbers and designs. I added some texture paste on both sides. I did some stenciling and also made marks with a bottle top and a credit card. I did some writing and I worked with my primary pigment powders to create all the colors. And then here on the bottom I added a cluster. Now this idea came from Gail and there will be a link to her video below. Basically I took a ticket, a piece of craft paper with some words on it, a piece of lace and a leftover piece from an old notepad and sewed them all on top of each other and then glued them to the page. I left a little opening here so I could add this little tag. It says art and soul and it fits right in there. Next I have an altered envelope. Now this was just a normal purple envelope. I took it completely apart. I laid it flat and decoupaged a piece of napkin on it and then glued it back together. I also gave it a little closure here and I created these paper hinges. It's just paper which I distressed and I drew those screws on it and there attached the envelope to the next page. Now inside the envelope I have two things. One is just an interesting page from the book and this is a little insert I can play with right behind my houses. Here it's bright and cheery and this was created just by playing with my pigment powders or we can turn it around and then my houses are in a snowstorm and this image came from a magazine. So I'm keeping these in the envelope. Now the other side of the envelope I embellished a bit more. On this side I only distressed the edges a bit but here on the other side I added bits and pieces of napkin uh, which also had the theme Paris, few roses, some stamping and stenciling and another cluster. And here I used a piece of fabric some lace, a piece of book paper, a little tag here with an old-fashioned airplane, some little flowers and of course again everything was sewn together and then glued to the book and a tiny little tag and it says 100% and some fibers over here. Now these are the other side of the paper hinges. I made them look different and a different color on this side to match this page. Here I really just played with my gelatos and a new mask I had found again in a thrift store. I started by stenciling some design with a 3D stencil paste and then I added my gelatos. I used the mask which is kind of the opposite of a stencil. I got a little plan with some birds and some writing over here. And then I added a good amount of crackle glaze right here over the middle section. And it just came out really nice. I don't know if my camera picks it up, but it made real lovely crackles and I quite like the way it came out. Next is a double spread. A typical art journal collage page. Now I made a video on this page and you can find it in my channel. I only posted it two weeks ago. So I won't get too much into the details of this page. Here I used a die cut 
of a lovely owl I received in the mail. Now the die cut ended right here so I extended the branch and also added the leaves. I used a very simple homemade stamp, just a piece of craft foam to the end of a cork and my ink pad. Now the background uh, was music sheet paper. I added a lot of sprays and I also did a design with a string. You know where you have a lot of paint on your page and you add a string, cover it up and pull it out. Yep. So up here the design came quite nicely. It gives this kind of feathery, flowery design. Down here it didn't look so great, but the owl is pretty much covering that up. So a little splatter and this page was done. Next I just attached a very delicate handmade piece of paper and I attached it by sewing it into a piece of fabric. And here is another collage page. I found this couple dancing in an old National Geographic and I, I like any images related to India and Nepal. So I painted the mountains and the background of course. I did some embellishment on their clothes with my white gel pen added the word Himalayas and that's pretty much it. I enjoyed working on this. It reminds me of my time in that area. Next I have just an image I found in a book. I had it for a long time. I think it's a really nice photograph. Never wanted to cut it apart for uh, my collages. So I decided to use it just as a pocket it just got a little cut out here and a ready-made journal card. Now I use ready-made embellishments very sparingly. I prefer to make things from scratch but sometimes they come in handy. I added a piece of lace here on the bottom. Again it is sewn on. Nice spider page. Here I decoupage bits and pieces of book pages and sheet music. I distressed it, I added the border and then I created the silhouette just by blackening out the backside of a magazine image. I then drew the spider up here using my Posca pen, a little bit of permanent marker and that's pretty much it. And I gave him a little phone over here, it's just a little a metal charm just in case he needs to call for help. <laughs> and here next is one of my faces. I'm still learning a lot about painting faces. This one was done with Neo Color 2 and so was the background. I added a lot of stamping to the background, some splatter, a lot of shading and so on. So there's this one. Next I created a whole section of pockets just made out of the original book pages. Now this section replaced one of the slim pages I had originally added to the signature just because it saved a little bit of space. My book was getting really chunky and don't get me wrong I love chunky journals but I do want them to still be able to close, still look like books and still are able to stand up in my bookshelf. So this shows off some of the whimsical illustration which came with the book. There is Charlie up here, there is Willy Wonka and I clipped out a few circles of other illustrations, sewed them to the pockets and all these pockets are sewn together. The whole section is sewn because as I said I added this later on. Then I created some very simple tags. These are just bits and pieces of paper, a little embellishment with my pen, some stamping, some fibers, very simple. So they live in here. Now the background was altered by using gesso, some gelatos and some uh, alcohol inks on the edges. So the next part has more pockets. Up here I have room for a couple of journaling spots again. These are cut out from craft paper so were pretty much decorated for me. I just added the lace on the top. 
Then here on the bottom, right underneath the arrow, is a little corner tug with uh, one of those small collect collectible cards. And this one is from New Mexico. And here is a little journaling spot. Then on the next page, I made a big pocket. Again, with a ready-made uh, journal tag here. I added two on top of each other using uh, paper bread. I did a little bit of stamping on it. And when you pull it out, you can see the image underneath because I punched out a circle right here in the pocket. Of course, when my tag goes in, it covers up that image again. Then down here is another little pocket with a little owl decoration and a tiny tuck with an arrow. Now, I did not pick the pages because of the words, mostly for the illustrations, but here the words were just so funny I couldn't resist. It's a little list and it says, he is screwy, he is batty, he is dippy, he is dotty, he is daffy, he is goofy, he is beany, he is buggy, he is wacky, he is loony. No, he is not. I thought it was kind of funny, so I added it here in the corner. And it ends with another very big tuck spot, another card, ready-made card. I just added a bit of lace to it. And all the coloring was done just with different colors of gelatos and so on. I left all the strings and yeah, that's it. It's a very simple collage page. The background was made from a reprint of an old map of Paris. You can see the Eiffel Tower right over here. And I added some distress ink in teal and brown to the background. Now this fellow came from a school yearbook. He was climbing up a pole. I extended the pole. I added the paintbrush, which was a magazine image, extended the paint and the drips, then did a little decorating on the edges, a little highlighting, and that's pretty much it. It's a very simple page, but I quite like it. Next, a belly band. Now I did this by adding a piece of lace underneath an old doily with a flower on top of it. It's sewn to the page and underneath it is just a piece of pretty gift wrapping paper. I had it for a long time. It was a rather small piece. It has these pretty gold dots all over it and I thought it made a great background for something like this. And the belly band hold these three postcards. These are images from places in California and this one here is about an image which had been painted on an old saloon floor right close by where I live. It's actually in Central City here in Colorado and I've seen it and of course there's a big story about why it is painted on a saloon floor and you can probably find it and read all about it. Next I have a piece of handmade paper. It has a great texture and feel to it and it has some branches and leaves embedded in it. I soaked the edges in a bit of red and brown watercolor. I attached a little metal heart right here on the top just by sewing it on and it basically protects the next page. Here I did a little abstract with my palette knife. I a little velvet ribbon and a lot of little micro beads. These are embedded with glossy accents so they don't go anywhere. Now working with a palette knife on simple cardstock it doesn't have the same effect than working on canvas but I do like the color combination. Next is another double spread, a collage and I posted a complete video of this page just last week so it's very easy for you to find so if you're curious of how I put this together please go and take a look. That, that brings me nearly to the last page and here I created a background using a magazine image of coffee beans. I used an extra piece to embed this card, playing card and it makes a nice little 
tuck spot for this little fellow. I made him out of playing cards. As you can see, I extended the top by using two pieces on top of each other. This piece was from an ace. And then, of course, the arms and legs, they're all attached with tiny little paper brads. And he's holding a ace of heart in his hand. And I think he is looking for his queen of hearts. And she, of course, is right up here attached with a fancy little paper clip. And he's, the king seems to have an ace up his sleeve. So maybe he will be successful in finding his queen of hearts. Next are two envelopes. Just the tiny envelopes you can buy with thank you cards in them. So I decorated the cards and the envelopes. These have decoupage pieces of book pages, uh, some vintage printouts, stamping and so on. A lot of distressing on the edges. I also punched a half circle here. And in hindsight I added the word dream on here on the bottom because this fellow looked a bit serious. But with a little bit of imagination you can think that he is just daydreaming. So have a look at the card. I decorated them with pieces from the book. Again, it says Evening Bulletin Wonka Golden Ticket. And then in the inside there is a bit of fabric here. And I got this idea from Gail as well. Underneath I have an image from the book. There's some stamping and distressing going on. Another little tiny belly band with another one of those vintage collectible cards. Yep, this is from Santa Fe, New Mexico. And of course I added a little tag here just made out of fabric. There's a lot of sewing going on over napkin and distress inks and gelatos and you name it. It's all on there. And the second one. And this one has the evening bulletin on the front which says Wonka factory to be opened at last to lucky few. Again, I embellished it much the same way than the other one. More fab. Again, I added some fibers and another image from the book and another one of those small collectible cards. This one is a highway in Albuquerque, a little belly band. And that's pretty much it. And this one lives right here. Now, on the back of these, I just glued some craft paper, I distressed the edges, added some stamping, especially these two frames. I also uh, gave the signature an extra piece of cotton fabric and that left me with just uh, the back cover here. And I used a piece taken from a broken wall clock. The paper was already distressed. All I had to do uh, add a little stamping and these little violins. Now these came from a laminated sheet of paper so they are a bit more sturdy than regular paper and I attached them with one of those spiral paper brats and they function as my hands and I think <laughs> it looks kind of cool and whimsical. So down here is my last edition, a small tag. It says think big, dream big some fibers and that brings me to the end of my journal here. I hope you enjoyed this flip through and as I mentioned in my last video it was definitely a combination of art journal pages and the fun pockets and tucks you find in junk journals. Now if you are inspired to make a book like this just use what you have handy. I think part of the fun of creating a book like this is just using up all the odds and ends you have in your stash. So that's it for today. Thank you so much for coming. I will see you really soon again and bye bye for now.